Well, good morning, folks. This is Jeff with MJ Adventuring, and we get questions all the time about what exactly do we do to clean the fish that we catch in order to prepare them for a meal. And so I've taken the footage from our recent beach trip video and presented it here in a standalone format as sort of a quick reference guide for you so that you can come back to this as often as you need to, um, as fast or slow as you want, to see exactly what it is that Alan and I do to prepare our catch in several different ways for uh, a meal. So stick around and hopefully this will be helpful for you. Hopefully you'll learn something and hopefully this will help you overcome uh, the intimidation factor of keeping the fish that you catch for dinner. Well guys, a couple things that I like to do every time I clean the fish. Um, this is really great. We've got a fish cleaning station here. I've got a hose. If you have a garden hose at home, you can use a garden hose as well. But rinse your fish off. Uh, if you've ever spent any time around fish or you know the stereotype about fish, that they're slimy, it's true because they're slimy. Uh, and so I like to rinse a little bit of that slime off if you can. Uh, there's a couple different ways uh, that we'll show you we're going to be dressing fish. This beautiful uh, trout here um, that Jack caught, we're going to fillet it. Uh, some of these fish will probably uh, leave whole, but uh, come in here with a good sharp knife. You've got to have a good sharp knife. Uh, this is a mustad. And then you're going to make a slit right there behind the gills and then take the tip of that fillet knife running down the back. Uh, you can feel the, the bones in the middle if you have a good sharp knife like this one. If you're not careful, you'll cut through the bones. Uh, but you just want to make a, a slice uh, right all the way down to the tail. But don't cut all the way through the tail. Uh, and then you'll use these uh, bones that run along the vertebrae. You can kind of hear a ticking sound. I don't know if you guys can pick that up on the camera or not. Uh, you want the tip of your knife to be ticking along those bones. That means you're not wasting meat. Um, I always uh, fillet around the ribs. Uh, some folks like to fillet the ribs off. I'm not particularly fond of it because I don't really like eating them. There's not that much meat around them. Um, and then you're just going to come down. And one of the keys here is do not cut this piece right here. We're going to turn this fillet around. And if you wanted to, you could scale this fish. Uh, leave the scales on and the skins on, but they're much better in my opinion uh, To cut all that off then I'm gonna run this knife right down here next to the fillet and I'm gonna slide that Back and forth kind of pushing down towards the meat without cutting through the skin And then a lot of that red meat is gone. You got a beautiful boneless fillet here That's got a little bit of blood on it because it's a good fresh fish But rinse that off Got a basically boneless, beautiful, skinless fillet um, that is great, blackened. Uh, it's good, deep fried. You can bake them, grill them, whatever you want to do. Um, but just a great fillet, uh, beautiful piece of meat. Uh, some folks, like I say, will like to leave them uh, with the skin on, but uh, I think they're much better with the skin off. And then you're just going to turn that fish over and do the same number uh, with it, moving that knife point uh, right there down along the backbone coming down to the end and almost sound is almost as important as a visual of this and again you can see it's just ticking the bones there I actually just cut through the backbone because my knife's a little sharp um, just make your way down Cutting along those bones. If you accidentally do like I did, cut through the backbone, you can always come back, neaten that fillet up in a minute, cut those little pin bones out. Uh, gonna cut back up here again around that rib cage again. Depending on whether you're right handed or left handed, you'll find that one side of the fillet <laughs> tends to be a little easier than the other. That's absolutely right. <laughs> uh, and so I always find that the first side I do is much easier than the second. Um, but yeah, we're just going to come through here. You see there's a little bit of meat there left on those ribs. But then just come straight down around that backbone. And then... If you have ever wondered why fillet knives are bendy, this right here is why. See how he's pressing down on that knife? And, and it's he's bending. putting a, a curve in the blade so that he's only cutting the skin off and not cutting meat with it. Yep. And a little bit of meat is going to come to that, but that's kind of intentional. There's a, a dark red line strip of meat right there. You can kind of see that. 
uh, that adds a really strong flavor to the fish and then you're, you're done with the skin the scales and uh crabs got to eat so we will feed the crabs over here but you got two again beautiful boneless uh skinless fillets wash them off eat them fresh if you can if not freeze them in some water or a vacuum sealer if you want uh, but see you can see where the ribs the ribs are missing there on both these fillets so you don't have to deal with those bones uh, from the ribs uh, the next thing we're going to do uh, is we've got some whole fish here uh, this here is a great example uh, this is a fish that i would encourage you don't sleep on uh, it's a sand perch a lot of people would say that's a trash fish you can't eat that uh, they're delicious so you've got a scaler here um, you can see how it's got almost like a serrated edge, but I'm able to run my finger across it. It's not like a knife. Uh, if you don't have a scaler, that's okay. You can use either the front side of a fillet knife like this. That'll dull your knife up a little bit, or even the back side of a fillet knife works as well. We'll do one side with the knife, and then we'll do the other side with the scaler, so you can see the difference. Uh, these sand perch aren't very hard to scale. Some fish, like black drum, or red drum uh, are notoriously hard to scale. The old adage is you need a garden hoe uh, to scale them. Uh, but the scaler, you see it does a whole lot quicker job. It grabs a lot of them with all those little serrated fingers. Uh, it does a great job scaling them. One, one piece of advice that I would give you, uh, if you plan on scaling your fish, eating them whole, make sure you uh, get here around all the fins, the pectoral fins up here, around the uh, back anal fin at the very top along the dorsal. Uh, those little scales up there like the hide, uh, but also make sure you keep your fish on some ice. Uh, keep them wet. If you let your fish sit out in the sun or they're not on ice, they're going to dry out. And if they dry out, those scales are going to be a whole lot harder um, to, to put on them. So we're going to rinse off this area here uh, just so it'll be good and clean for you guys. Uh, but now we've got a nice scaled sand perch here. What I like to do is I like to come right here underneath uh, these fins right here and just make an incision with your knife come all the way around you cut out that backbone uh, that right there makes great drum bait or catfish bait but today we're just going to feed the crabs take your fillet knife here uh, and run it all the way back down to that anal fin and then make a slice straight out you can stick your fingers in there if you want but use your knife you can use your knife there and rake all of that out uh, and you would think well that's job done but it's not make a little incision right here as well uh, you got a little bloodline i don't know what the specific uh, term for this part of the anatomy of the fish is but uh, scrape a little bit of that out make sure that you've got all those innards out and then take your water hose and uh, rinse that bloodline out sometimes you need to run your finger up in there as well uh, but then you're good to go i mean that that right there is ready to be put on the grill uh, or you could fry it um, one of the things that I like to do is I'm getting ready to, to fry my fish is I score them. Uh, and you can take a fillet knife. We'll just use this perch right here to demonstrate it uh, and score it till you hit the backbone. You're not cutting it all the way through. Uh, these fish, I presume, are going to be fried. And so I like to run through uh, four or five cuts through them. I usually don't do this until I get ready to fix them, especially if I'm going to freeze them. Uh, but all those little grooves right there are great when you get ready to fry them, catch a little seasoning, a little bit of breader. Uh, as well as it allow your fish to cook a whole lot faster. Uh, so scoring fish is a great thing to do. And you may think, uh, why are you leaving these fins attached? You can cut them off if you want. Uh, but this fried tail fin right here is the potato chip of the sea. Uh, so that'll get good and breaded and fried. It'll be nice and crunchy, crispy as well. Uh, highly recommend it. Jack always asks for the fins because they taste like potato chips. Well, Until they get too big, in my opinion. Once they get real big, like big catfish fins... I don't, I don't eat those, but little ones, they're pretty good. So we're going to show you a third way to, to uh, clean a fish. Uh, Jeff Fury's caught this uh, beautiful, we call them Virginia mullets. Some people call them sea mullets. Uh, some people call them whiting. They're all actually different species of kingfish. We've actually got uh, two different species here. They look very similar. Um, I believe this is a northern kingfish, and this is a gulf kingfish identified by the little black spot uh, at the tip of its tail uh, and this great big long pointy. Uh, dorsal fin, but both of these are incredibly hard-hitting fish, great to eat. Some of the best table fare out there uh, during, really year-round in North Carolina, great during the fall. So what we're going to do with this fish is we're going to scale it, then fillet it. Uh, so we're not going to skin this fish out like you do on a trout. His, his skin's a little bit uh, thinner. It doesn't uh, detract from the taste a whole lot like a trout. So we're just going to scale it again with a scaler. Again, the scaler makes quick work, making sure you get all those scales up around the dorsal fin. 
around that tail fin back here, around the anal fin and up against the pectoral fins. We're just going to scale him good. Making sure to get all those off. If you miss one or two, it's not the end of the world. Uh, if you tried to fry or grill or bake this fish with all the scales on, when it came time to eat it, you would have a mouthful of scales, uh, which in my opinion would not be very appetizing at all. Uh, we're gonna rinse them off again. Getting all those scales out of the way so you guys can see what's going on. Uh, typically what I would do if we weren't doing a YouTube video is I would scale them all first and then fillet them all and do all that stuff in one step. Uh, but we want to make sure you guys see everything you need to do. So again, just like with that trout, we're going to score right here behind the head. Come back around and run that knife point straight back down along the backbone. And because we're not going to skin this fish, if you go all the way to the tail, it won't be the end of the world. You see how that knife is clicking there? There's hardly any meat left on those bones. Um, here's another fish. If you wanted to, you could leave the ribs attached. I'm not real fond of them. Uh, so I've got a good sharp knife here and I'm just gonna cut that filet away from the ribs. You can see the ribs in there underneath that meat. Come straight through. Virginia mullet filet, ready to be rinsed off, seasoned, breaded, and fried. Um, we'll turn around, we'll do the same thing on the other side. Come back in. Get pretty close to those ribs. The thickest portion of meat is right above them on the shoulders of the fish. Uh, not the fish actually have shoulders, <laughs> but that's where the thickest portion of the meat is. Run that knife all the way back down and again, Got a little section of tail there, but cut that off. And uh, that I know for a fact that is one of Jeff's favorite eating fish right there. Uh, that's a fact. Uh, great, great fillet. Um, one other style of fish uh, that I'll show you. Uh, if you really uh, are just up for some adventure, we're going to take this croaker right here. Going to show you how to dress a whole fish. Uh, I know a lot of folks here at the coast, especially old timers, uh, like to eat whole fried fish. Um, especially with spots sometimes you can fry them with the heads on um, if you just want to be adventurous and cook a fish head on where you don't waste hardly any meat can eat all the way up to the head uh, you can certainly do that as well I, when I fish for trout in the mountains of North Carolina and I catch small trout in the 8 to 12 inch range this is my favorite way uh, to fix them and to eat them so we're just scaling this one just like any of the others all the way up to the head this time Getting off as many of these scales as you can. Try not to miss any. Rinse them off. Now we're not going to get the head off of this fish. Uh, but we are going to take this fillet knife here. Uh, and instead of starting back here, we're going to, or ending right here, we're going to start up here. And slice this all the way up to the gills. Then you got a big open pouch here. You can use your knife to get all those innards out. It's not quite as easy, so a lot of times I'll just stick my fingers in there. Uh, almost all of that will come out uh, without giving you any kind of a fit. You'll have that little blood pouch that's in there as well. You're going to make sure to get it out. Uh, these croakers, um, what's interestingly enough, we've got a pinfish coming to the table. This little uh, booger right here, they have their air bladders that they pound against, being part of the drum family, uh, that give them their name croakers, where they make their croaking noise, their croaking sound. Mm -hmm. Uh, cut that knife up just a it's little bit closer just turn back. to the gills. And everything will be out. One of the other things that you can do if you want, uh, you can reach in here and you can pull the gills out. Uh, I don't know anybody that really likes to eat the gills, um, but you can reach in there. They come out fairly easily. You can stick your fingers right through them. They'll all come out fairly easy. And I know it looks like a mess, but once you hose it all off, you have a great way to enjoy the entirety of the fish. Uh, if you want to not waste anything at all, this is a great, great way to do it. And get a lot of flavor as well. Um, you get a lot of flavor out of a fish 
win the hole like this. So this fish here is good to go. Uh, you could score him just like you would do uh, the sand perch that I showed you earlier when you get ready to fry them. Uh, clean insides in there. You can see the gills are removed. All the entrails are gone. All that rib meat is still there. Uh, you could eat all the way up to that head right there. So that's uh, a, a fourth way we've got here for you to enjoy your fish. So any of these fish could be done this way. These uh, croakers could be filleted out, skinned out. Um, I do that a lot, especially if I'm making fish tacos and things like that uh, with smaller fish. You just need a few more of them to make a meal. But uh, I hope this guy helps. Uh, helps you enjoy your own catch and cook. All right, now for something a little different. Alan is going to show us how to clean and dress puffer fish. No, I know what you're thinking. These are not the Japanese puffer fish that'll kill you if you eat the wrong part. Uh, these are just good old North Carolina puffer fish. The dangerous ones are found over in the Pacific. Uh, these guys you'll see a lot of times in the surf, and most of the time people throw them back because they don't realize how excellent they truly are. So show us what to do. Sure, so just to reiterate, uh, this, this fish right here, I know it's not the most attractive looking thing in the world. Uh, it's a northern puffer. Uh, honestly, probably, if not one of my favorites, my absolute favorite fish to eat. Um, unlike a lot of other fish, you look at this and you think to yourself, well, how am I gonna fillet it? I mean, it's, it's very slimy like a lot of other fish. Uh, it's got a tough, uh, real sandpaper almost like. You can probably hear that skin. They've got these little burrs on the outside of them. Uh, they won't really hurt you. Um, but these are absolutely delicious. Some people call them the chicken of the sea. Uh, so what you're going to do is you're going to take your fillet knife, uh, just like you would any other time, come in here to the vent and run that knife all the way up to the teeth. Good knife, sharp knife makes all the difference in the world. They have absolutely ginormous livers. Uh, that's a northern puffer liver. They're huge. Um, I've never eaten one. Um, I wouldn't advise it. Um, wouldn't advise that at all. This guy here still got his air bladders uh, puffed up. But what you'll do is you'll you'll see here. Um, I'm running my fingers up into the fish. Sometimes you have to tear the skin a little bit more, or run the knife in there if you're not comfortable tearing it. Um, but I'm going to run my fingers in here, and essentially. What I want to do is push my fingers all the way through that membrane under the skin, and I'm going to turn this fish essentially inside out. Now, see, all that skin is already removed. I'm just turn this fish inside out. I'm going to pull all that skin and all that head all the way up to the very top. Then I'm going to come in here with my fillet knife, and I'm going to get as close to the head as I can. Uh, sometimes you have a few of the entrails that are still attached. You just pull those off, wash those off. Um, again, just pull, wash any of the entrails that are stuck on off. Um, they won't kill you, they won't hurt you. And that's it. Um, this fish right here has vertebrae that runs down the middle of it, but there are no rib bones in here like with a lot of other fish. Uh, and you have two, right down the, the sides here, two beautiful streaks of meat. Um, people fry these up and they say they look like drumsticks. They call them chicken of the sea. This is just excellent eating. A lot of people say it's a very sweet meat, uh, and I think that's a very accurate description. Um, but if you catch these, uh, you see somebody throwing them back and they say, oh, those are poisonous, they're trash, whatever. Uh, grab a few, put them in your bucket, put them in your cooler, uh, run a knife, slip down them, turn them inside out, cut the head off. That's all there is to it. You have these beautiful pieces of uh, wonderful sweet meat. You can bake these or fry them. Uh, my favorite way to eat them is just to roll them in house salt tree and give them a grease bath. Uh, but check them out, try them sometime. Northern Puffers, Chicken of the Sea, nothing better in my not so humble opinion. So if you wanna try something a little out of the ordinary, maybe next time you catch a Northern Puffer, throw it in the cooler instead of back in the ocean and uh, try something different. Well, as you can see, we cleaned a ton of fish that day. And like anything, you get better at it with practice, and I'm not going to lie, it was great to have a refresher course with Alan right there showing me, reminding me what to do, and I hope that will be true for you as well. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell button so you get a notification because we come out with new videos every Saturday morning. Well, this has been Jeff and Alan with MJ Adventuring, and we hope you guys have a great afternoon.